I'm Laura Delatore, and I have Jeffrey Wong with me here. And today, we're going to show you how you can scale your automation program to hundreds, if not thousands, of bots by leveraging citizen development. Now, digital natives are disrupting Fortune 500s at an alarming pace, and they're doing so in part because they maximize the use of the technologies that they adopt. Now, most of these companies are already automating. Many of them are even our customers. Those who are ahead of the curve use what's called a center of excellence, or COE. This is a small group of people, usually professional developers in the IT department, where all RPA activity resides. Now, this is great for quality and control, but it makes it really difficult to scale because resources are so slim. So what they tend to do is focus on a small number of high impact projects to prove the value. But what if you were to use business users as RPA developers or citizen developers? Because they're closer to the business, you can better leverage institutional knowledge, distribute bot development and management, and thereby exponentially increasing automation and the ROI that it brings. Now you can do this while removing risk and improving quality through central governance. And we're gonna show you how to do that. Think of it like climbing a mountain. You wouldn't go without training, your route map, a guide or gear, would you? Well, the same is true for scaling your automation program. It takes training and preparation to make sure that you can climb successfully. First, you're gonna to wanna to optimize your program for scalability. Think of this like your route map. You're creating standards and you're guiding participants along the journey. Next, you wanna engage business users to use and build automation by providing them user-friendly tools for citizen developers. This is your gear. It makes the trip a lot more enjoyable. Then you'll be ready to expand to local management. Think of this, you are the guide. That mountaineering guide will help the business units federate, distribute, and scale your automation program for you. But you'll wanna be there all along the way to ensure smooth progress up that mountain. This is what is central governance and local management a citizen development model. But don't worry, thanks to Automation Anywhere, our orchestration layer allows you to ensure quality and monitor progress all along the route. The goal here really is to free up your resources so that way you can innovate on strategic innovation and strategic automation projects. Let's take a double click on that. First, you wanna optimize your RPA program for scalability. You'll want to ensure you have executive sponsors. This is critical. Remember, it's not their day job. So what you wanna do is make sure that the executive sponsor is helping you to drive change. And I'll show you a couple of places where that's important. But it's also important to make sure that you're aligned with each business unit that you have participating in automation. So that way, when you're recognizing people, that they are reinforcing that culture of automation. You'll hear that a lot. Then you want to define your goals, training, and incentives. Think of your goals like points or milestones along that route map. You want to help steer progress as it goes. Then from the training standpoint, you want to create curriculum to get people to become citizen developers. Automation Anywhere University makes that simple, and it allows citizen developers to learn at their own pace, lifting a lot of that burden off of you. Then you wanna create incentives, and you'll hear this a lot, but the idea here is that you wanna create a reward system to reinforce a culture of automation. Then you wanna publish standards for bots, users, and the program itself. For bots, you wanna showcase what does it take to get into production. For users, what does it take to become a citizen developer? And then for the program, it's really that wrapper that helps onboard and have everybody enjoy that experience as they learn to RPA mastery. Then what you wanna do is update the roles, workflows, and governance processes. So what happens is that in many times, a center of excellence, because they're a small team, have never documented this stuff. 
Now's the time to get that on paper. So that way you get the business units to be more self-sufficient. Then you want to provide bot shells and pre best practice guidance. Again, this is all about self-sufficiency. Now you wouldn't start a coding project without some sample code and your docs, would you? Well, the same goes for automation. Make that journey easy for those who are gonna participate. Now that all the pre-work is over, it's time to engage business users to use and build their own automation. First, you wanna excite people about automation. Remember, this isn't their day job. So you wanna do is show them how easy it is to remove mundane tasks and improve productivity. And thanks to our new digital assistant for work, Ari, or Automation Anywhere Robotic Interface, it's as easy as a single click. Now that they're excited about automation, inspire users to find other areas for automation. Discovery Bot helps you do just that. Not only does it help them figure out what's right for automation, but it also lifts a lot of the burden off of you to understand what the process even is. Then you wanna make it easy with pre-built templates and best practices. All of that pre-work now is coming into play. The idea here is that you wanna make it super simple and easily findable. What we recommend is you have an internal marketplace to do that so they don't have to go hunting for this. And we'll show you our own private bot store where you can host these yourself. Then publicize wins and go big. And I can't emphasize this enough. What you're trying to do here is create a culture of automation. So whether you're showcasing somebody who has achieved a certification in Automation Anywhere University, or maybe they've built their first bot, or perhaps you're doing a botathon and you wanna promote the winners. It does two things. One, not only reinforce to those participants that they're doing a great job and building that relationship so that they're with you for the long haul, but you're also showcasing to those who aren't yet in the game how important automation is. And make sure those business leaders and the executive sponsor are also reinforcing that message. Now I'm gonna turn it on over to Jeffrey, who's gonna show you Ari, Discovery Bot, and Enterprise A2019, and how easy it is to onboard citizen developers. Jeffrey? Thanks for the intro, Laura. In today's business, you know, we have a magnitude of application that we have to work with. The problem is that each application has their own interface and way, ways of doing things. Here I'm gonna actually gonna show you Automation Anywhere Robotic Interface, ARI, and how it enables users to quickly and easily use bots while staying within the applications that the users are most familiar with. Here we're showing a customer support rep working on a laptop battery replacement request. Instead of going to the control room interface to run bots, we've created an integration with Salesforce so that the bots can run directly from within their application interface. And you'll see on the left-hand side right there, you know, the, bot, the agent has various bots that they can actually run. Um, in this case, the agent's gonna select the battery replacement option, and within seconds, the bot does a warranty inventory check, arranges the replacement to be sent, generates the necessary paperwork, and then closes out the case. If a person had to manually perform all of these actions, it would take at least a few, you know, few minutes after they were properly trained and practiced, of course. You know, the only problem is that it would still be subject to the possibility of performing human key and errors. Okay? Remember, all of this was done without the need to leave Salesforce. No need to change applications or screens or even you know, worry about what those workflow steps are actually doing in the background. The bot is set up to do the correct actions all of the time. I just showed you a small example of what Ari can do. You know, go check out the Ari Spotlight session for more information. Now let me show you how easy it is to find other things to automate using Discovery Bot. When automating, it's often very difficult for a user to explain what they do in a step-by-step -step manner with enough detail for a professional developer. Discovery Bot actually makes it simpler. And let me show you how that can be done for a business user in the order fulfillment 
department, okay? In this case, a customer's account payable department has sent an email asking for proof of delivery before payment is issued. Well, sounds reasonable. And the user in this order fulfillment is actually going to start recording their manual process. And in the lower right, you'll see that the discovery bot recorder will start and begin recording everything that we're doing. So let me actually start that up. So what we are gonna do here is we're gonna open up the email and read what it's about. We see that there is an attachment in the email, so we're gonna open that thing up too. And come on, attachment, perfect. Now we go, we note the invoice number, so we're gonna go on into our CRM and look for the proof of um, delivery, okay? So what we're gonna do is take the invoice number from the attachment, stick it in, and we're gonna open up the invoice. Now, once inside the invoice, we need to go find the order, and we're gonna open that up. And now we have to go and find the quote. So we scroll down, we open up the quote, and we look for the attachment. There it is. And this is the attachment that has all the license keys in it. So we save a copy of that down for us. And now all we have to do is actually reply back to the email. So you know, let's go ahead and compose and a response back so that the, um, they, so that they can actually arrange payment for it. All right, perfect. Now all we have to do is actually add in the attachment. So we add that in and we're ready to send it off. With that, the process is recorded and documented. So we can stop the discovery bot recorder now. If you check out the discovery bot spotlight session, they will go deeper into the next steps. Laura, wasn't that really straightforward? Yeah, that was very straightforward. I don't have any coding skills and, I can, and even I can do that. How about we see Enterprise A 2019? Is that easy enough for me as well? Sure, Laura. Let me show you how simple it is to work with our Enterprise A 2019 offering. My goal here is to build a simple bot from scratch in a matter of minutes. I'm gonna first actually build a form and then use that form to get user inputs. Then I'm gonna actually have the bot take that data and then put it into an Excel sheet. Okay. So first what we have to do is we go to the bots and then select my bots and then select a folder for me to build in. Uh, I'm gonna actually go and build that form and select that option here. And then you know, specify a name, hit the create button. Now to build a form, you know, we use actions on the left and drag them onto the form in the center. In this case, we're gonna build a basic form with three text fields, one for the name, one for the last name, and one for the email address. And then I'm gonna actually go in and add in a submit button once I finish configurations. And to make the form look a little bit nicer, I'm gonna adjust a couple of things on it, you know, including the height. Okay. And it's simple as that. Now let's actually go and build a bot. So we go back, choose the correct options, name it, hit create bot. And what we'll see is that the interface looks fairly similar to what we just saw. So again, we do dragging, op, dragging actions from the left into the center here to start building out our bot. We take the form display action and configure it for the form we just built. We select the form there, we hit confirm. Next, we actually need to go and add a loop and configure it so that we can take the action of that button on the form. You know, so what we'll do here is we're going to finish configuring that. And then the next step that we're gonna do is actually get the email address off of the form and then save it into a variable. So we grab that action and then we go and configure it. Now, once we finish this, Let's actually do something, when I say it's a little bit more fun. We're gonna take that email address and then save it into an Excel file. To do that, we're gonna take the pre-built Excel actions that make working with common applications very easy. So we you know, first configure it to open up the Excel that we wanna work with. So we configure that, and then we will then take the Excel action that will actually take that value and place it into Excel. We're done, we save it and we can run it. So let's see, the form comes up, we enter in 
first name, last name, and email address, and hit the button. And we'll see if the bot, all the bot works right. Perfect. No, it presents us a form that we built from scratch. It takes the input into the form. Then it takes the value and places it into an Excel sheet. We did that all via you know, the easy to use and understand drag and drop interfaces. It took what? Two minutes to do? What I built could easily be expanded to work with applications that run on your desktop or you know, browser-based applications like Salesforce, Workday, okay? Basically anything your browser works with. Kind of cool, isn't it? It's very cool, Jeffrey. Really, it really takes easy to use tools like these to get citizen developers to stray from their day jobs and help them improve their own productivity. All right, now we've shown you how you can optimize your program for scalability and engage employees to use and build automation. Now we're gonna show you how you can expand confidently through local management. First, you wanna start small. Choose one or two business units where you can run a pilot. This way you can smooth out the kinks and make it more self-sufficient as you add more business units. Next, prepare them for ownership. This is where you really wanna guide them. All of that work that you've done up front in step one is now coming to fruition. You're showcasing and ensuring that the documentation that you created is clear and easy to understand. In the long range, this will help you minimize your involvement as other business units get up to speed. As I mentioned, make sure you're there for them. Support is gonna be critical during this time. So monitor their progress and help steer that ship as they slowly but surely are able to take over day-to-day -day bot development, testing, and production. And then analyze and promote those wins. Now, as the global center of excellence, the head of the entire program, you're already going to be monitoring progress at the program level. But what's important here is make sure that you're promoting wins also at the business unit and at the individual level. Again, this is all about creating that culture of automation. So let me show you how you can expand with confidence. Automation Anywhere's orchestration layer ensures that you have governance and oversight of all RPA activity. Starting with configuration, you own the licenses, the users, and what roles that they can perform. And through our roles-based access control, you can manage exactly who has access to what. And through our credential vault, you also have access, or you have management of which bots have access to what. But it's not just important to figure out exactly who can run bots, you need control over the entire life cycle. This is a course to help you monitor and steer the ship. So you can monitor everything in any environment, including building and testing, as well as deployment. And when it's deployed, you also control the scheduling, who runs the bots, and you can also balance that workload between the bots to ensure that they run sufficiently. All of this is possible through logging and monitoring. You have real-time analytics to show you how things are progressing and show you exactly what bots are doing what and the status that each of them are in. And through our logging, you also have a complete audit trail, should anything steer off course. Now, as you would expect in an enterprise level system, you also can schedule updates of Automation Anywhere on your own time. You also can ensure that only the third-party applications that you see fit are in place inside that automation environment. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on over to Jeffrey and he's gonna show you exactly how this works. Then he's gonna show you Private Bot Store and that is your internal marketplace. And that helps you build not just a culture of automation, but a culture of reuse and that will help improve productivity even in the bot development process. Jeffrey? Laura, expanding the capabilities of workers can be worrisome for those in charge of the center of excellence. You know, the thought of the, what if a worker does this or that? 
it can be a little bit scary. Let's actually go and explore the what if, okay? So we have Ann Smith, a new citizen developer in the finance department. She's not very familiar with bots and where they go. Here's the thing, we have safeguards in place to only allow what the center of excellence allows for them, okay? So what's gonna happen here is she logs in, she logs into control room using her credentials. We will see her private bot building folder and we'll see that it has various bots that she can run. Okay? What we're gonna do now is go and look in her public folder and she has access to you know, various bots, including a folder called the Excel lookup folder. And we'll see that the exact same folder is in her private bot building area too. We're gonna open up that folder and the bot and you know, give it a quick look. You know, everything looks good. So she's gonna actually try to check in that bot into the public area to share it. Now she's unable to actually replace that existing bot because she has no right access there. Her permissions don't allow it. The role-based access controls are tightly integrated into enterprise control room and thus check and enforce all rights. This ensures that bots are not accidentally overridden or removed, okay? Now let's try to check in a bot from someplace else. We select a bot called last and we try to check it in. And what we'll see here is we go through the options and they're in the comment and we hit the check in button and we see that it works. It works fine. What you just saw was role based access control are back enforcing granular authentication and access. This means that the administrator of the center of excellence can decide you know, what areas people can get into and also what they can and can't do in the system. You know, we've designed and we've security and access control throughout the platform. I just gave you a taste of how access management and control is done you know, in the platform. Let me show you how to drive that culture of reuse, consistency, and quality through the use of private bot store. It is your internal marketplace that allows anybody in your organization to reuse bots. Here, we have the private bot store and it has bots that are published by your company. In this case, we're gonna use a company called Glemco, okay? And if we scroll down a little bit, what you will actually see are bots available from our public bot store that are built by expert developers, okay? Imagine the ability to increase the efficiency of your bot developers just by being able to reference over a thousand different bots that experts have built, designed, you know, and tested, okay? You don't have to build all of your bots from scratch. Now this makes it easy for people to actually go and you know, build the bots that they actually need to build. Now let's actually go to the administration screen and see what's in there. And we go and click on it. You can customize almost everything in the bot store. Customize it with the look and feel that you need, you know, the headlines, the body, the URL, the logo. Change it as you need to make it your own, including the access rights. You can also put your bot submission guidelines front and center. This means that everybody knows what the expectations are to get a bot published and the rules you know, from the very beginning. The bot ideas can also be submitted and managed. And this means that anybody can actually submit an idea on you know, what bot to build that can be evaluated and then hopefully translate into a bot. Let's actually go into a submission idea and take a look at it. You know, these details around a bot idea includes you know, what the bot should do, what are the applications it needs to work with? The business processes involved, you know, the inputs, the outputs, and you know, priority. This is all captured so that the idea can be properly evaluated and you know, hopefully built, okay? Custom, customers can now crowdsource the ideas in a centralized location. So let's go actually select the bottle of interest and you know, take a look at it. You see here, you know, there are various you know, details about what the bot does, its requirements, its inputs, you know, for it to run properly. You should also note that, you know, all this information is curated 
at the time that the bot was submitted for approval. So let's actually go in and uh, you know click the uh, get bot. Let's actually go and uh, you know, get the bot. So we'll go ahead and click the get bot. All access is managed you know, by the control room. That is the single source of command and control. The bots are actually stored within control room. So there's no need to worry about you know, versions getting out of sync. If the requester does not have access to the bot, the email option provides a quick and easy method to actually request access. The last part, we're gonna take a look at its approval process. Now let's pick a bot to review. And here you see you know, all the information you know, about the bot pending approval. You know, the name, the descriptions, you know, the benefits, the images, and various other attributes to help people understand you know, what this bot does and you know, how to use it. This also includes a link to the bot location in control room and contact information you know, about the author. And then as, here's the thing, as bots are approved, then they become available for both your expert and citizen developers to reuse. And here's the thing, as more people submit bots and they get approved, it will become almost like a badge of honor for the creators, which will then encourage others to build and submit their own ideas and bots. And in the end, you'll be able to leverage the collective experience of the workforce so that they become more efficient, they scale, and truly do things smarter and not harder. All right, thanks Jeffrey for showing us those tools. You know what I really like about them is that every part of the system helps users, every type of user, whether that be the COE or the business level COE or the individual citizen developer, it helps them all be more self-sufficient. Now, what we've shown you today is how you can optimize your program for scalability engage business users to use and build automation, and expand with local management. Only Automation Anywhere can help you scale with confidence through engaging employees in a governed model. To get started, go see the developer spotlight. Thanks, and with that, go be great.